Oh, all right. If we were looking at patterns, how we could use multiplication or division to solve these problems, let's take a look here. So now, if you remember, we did know that one half was the same as two iterations of four. So that'd be the same if we times the top number, the numerator, and the denominator by the same number, which is two, we come up with two fourths. Well, let's see if that would work another way. Let's see if that would work again. If we times both by two times two, well, let's see if that would work because we're looking to see things that would equal one half. Well, two times two we know is four, and then we have four times two, which is eight. Whoops. We just had the next one come up as well. All right, so we know we've got four eights as well, and we could go on and on to solve additional iterations of one half. So now down here, we've got two sixths and one third. That's obviously not equal to one half, but what we've done there is we've done a number that goes into both of those evenly. So two divided by two is one. 6 divided by 2 is 3, because we know that 2 times 3 is 6. Let's take a look at another one and see if that same thing would work. Let's do, well, I don't know. Let's think of, let's do, not 7. <laughs> I don't know why I drew a 7. But let's do 8. And we will do another number that's divisible by 2. Let's do 12. Okay. So we're going to divide both of those numbers by 2 and see what that equals. And then we'll do it, see if we can do it again. So 8 divided by 2 is 4. 12 divided by 2 is 6. Okay, so that'd be another equivalent fraction. We can do it again. Divide both of them by 2. 4 divided by 2 is 2 because 2 times 2 is 4. And then 6 divided by 2 is 3. So equal fractions here. We have 8 twelfths, 4 sixths, and 2 thirds. So as long as we know that the top number and the bottom number are divisible by the same number, we can find additional equivalent fractions.